The thing I like the most when dabbling into other creative fields like photography, design, and everything in between is how much of your skills and creative thinking can transfer through. For example, the composition rules you've learned in photography can apply to your design work, and the other way around. All creative fields are in a way connected, constantly informing each other. And this video is the proof of that. Today we're going to steal a technique from the world of videography and apply it to the world of 3D. Let's get to it. False color is one of the many different ways videographers evaluate exposure. We have a ton of other tools to do the same thing, like histograms, waveforms, vector scopes, and zebra stripes. But false color is one of the most visual ways to do that. This is how false color looks. It's used in camera or through external monitors during the shoot, and what it does is really simple. It maps the luminance values of an image to predefined color values. For example, black maps to blue, white to red, 50% gray to yellow, and so on and so forth. This in turn makes it extremely easy to identify the areas of the image that are over or underexposed. Let's go into Photoshop and see things in more detail. Here I have just a bunch of gray values, with black at the top and total white at the bottom. If I enable the false color LUT, the grayscale values shift. Black turns purple, white turns red, and all the other in-between values are assigned different colors. We're not forced to use these specific colors. If you search for false color LUTs, you will find there's a lot of color variance between them. But the rules are always the same. Key gray values get distinct colors. I'll show you how we can create your own LUT later on, but for now let's just see the effects of false color on some professionally shot images. The photographer is Kyle Kong, and I found his images just by Google searching. I'll have his website in the description below. Now, these images have a lot of dark and bright tones, but despite that, none of the colors clip. Let's enable the LUT. As you can see, despite the very dark tones, we barely go to purple. Just as a reminder, purple is absolute black, and red is absolute white. So, most of the sweater's dark values lie in between blue and purple, which means all of our tones are a healthy level above pure black. The purple tones we see here are not pure purple, they're in between values. But even if we did have pure black in these areas, it wouldn't really matter since it covers a pretty small and unimportant area of the image. We also see some white clipping, but like before, it's not really pure white. If we zoom in, you will see that most of the values are orange and not red. The other thing we can immediately notice if we compare the two images is the color variance on the model's faces, which is one of the key things false color helps us with. We can very easily nail the exposure of different skin tones. The colors of the darker skin model hover around this area. We have a lot of greens, grays, and blues, which is a good rule to keep in mind when trying to correctly expose darker skin tones. On the other hand, the light skin model has colors that hover more in the green, pink, and yellow areas. And just to make it clear, false color does not look into the color values of an image. It just looks into the luminance values. So, if we apply the false color LUT on a black and white version of the image, the LUT result is going to be exactly the same. So, that's all well and good, but why should we really care about all that when rendering an image? After all, we do have the ability to export 16 and 32-bit images. Why bother nailing the exposure and look when we can always adjust things in post? While that is true, and I also do a lot of post-processing work on my images, it's better to get as close as possible to the result you have in mind on render time. Having to do post-work, let alone complex post-work, adds unnecessary complexity to a project. If the project is just one image, it's probably okay to do everything in post. If though we need to process 10 or 20 or 50 renders, all of a sudden the complexity of a project has ballooned. Not to mention that in some cases we won't be able to fix everything in post. So let's see how we can use false color in cinema. I'll use Redshift for rendering, but the process is going to be the same whatever renderer you use. This is the classic model from 1024, so if you want to follow along you can download the model from the link in the description below. Once we load up the LUT, we need to make sure to enable this option here, otherwise we will get weird results. Now that that is out of the way, we can immediately see some of the problematic areas of the image. First off, the highlights are clipping, so we need to reduce the intensity of the right light. The next thing on our list is this side here, it's a little bit too bright. 
the effect of the light is a bit too strong for my liking. We have some nice shadows here, giving the portrait a more dramatic look, so we will definitely keep that. The background could be brightened up a bit, but we're not really going to be bothered with that. Let's start adjusting things and let's see what we can come up with. First, let's reduce the highlights on the right side. The clipping is less now, but we can afford to tone it down a little bit more. Let's try 90. It's much better, but let's also reduce it a little bit more. Let's do 80. 80 looks good, but let's reduce it a little bit more. Let's try 70. 70 looks good. Now let's take care of the overexposed left side. 70 looks good here as well. We have some highlights, but we're in a nicer skin tone area. More in the pinks rather than the yellows. But I think we can afford to tone it down a little bit more. Let's try 50. Yep, that looks a little bit more balanced. As you can see, as we adjust the lighting, we get instant feedback. This is exactly what we need to make better decisions. Now, let's disable the LUT and see how the actual render looks. It's much, much better. It looks way more balanced. We have some nicer strong shadows here and the head doesn't look like it has a giant spotlight on it like it did before. I kinda want to tone down the light a little bit more, so let's try 40. Yeah, I think that looks much better. But I feel we need some more highlighting on the left side, so let's add another light and adjust things a little bit more. As you can see, without even looking at the render, we can make some very informed decisions. So let's compare where we were at the beginning and where we are now. The second render looks way more natural and balanced. Could we do all these improvements without the LUT? Absolutely, but the LUT gives us the extra confidence we need to get things in the right place. Could we also fix these things in post? Some of them yes, but we shouldn't really rely on post work to fix basic settings like the exposure of an image. Better to nail things down from the beginning rather than adding extra steps in the end. I personally use false color quite a bit, not only in videos or renders, but also to evaluate my photos. It just takes the guesswork out of the equation. Now, if I manage to convince you and you want to test this method out, you have two options. You can either download a false color LUT or create your own. It's a ridiculously easy process. It's just a gradient map over an image. To create my LUT, I used Photoshop, added the gradient map layer, and then I started mapping different colors to different grayscale values. Before you start using the gradient map, just make sure to use the default colors by pressing D. And then just start adding colors to different gray values. Of course, you should try to stick to specific grayscale zones. I loosely follow these zones here, but as you can see, I switch the colors to my preference. You need to experiment a little bit and move the knots around, but it's not really rocket science. In just a few minutes, you'll have what you need. Once you're done with that process, you can export your LUT by going to File, Export, and then Color Lookup Tables. And that's all there is to it. By the way, if you want to learn more about LUTs, I have a whole other video about them, so make sure to check that out as well. And that's it. Give it a try and see how well it fits your workflow. I think you will immediately see how helpful it is and how easy it is to expose your scenes. Let me know in the comments below how your experiments turned out. And of course, don't forget to like the video. It helps the channel immensely. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.